everybody welcome back so on popular request i decided to come up with a standard whiteboard method of showing you how my six months uh, look like and i'm sure this looks a little intimidating but let me let me tell you that this is the best possible way of going around your rotations of finishing your u world gap plan whatever resources you have and when i say best possible it is my best possible way Feel free to customize and do whatever you have to with it. So I'm going to start right off and tell you that I did a short video on how I went around biochemistry and I have plans, similar plans for other subjects. So just to give you a, a broad bird's eye view, your uh, subjects would be biochemistry, microbiology, immunology, behavioral science, biostats, anatomy, physiology, pathology and pharmacology. Now out of these, uh, these four subjects I like to deal with separately and these four in a slightly different way. Like how I did for biochemistry, I will be doing uh, short videos for all these subjects, uh, particularly the four on the top, but these four I like to clump together and speak of them as systems. Um, now particularly for uh, these four subjects, they need multiple revisions. I mean I would say that these need revisions too, but these ones have to be planned out so that you get the maximum output on your final day of the exam. So diving right in, uh, we clearly have a six month schedule and the months being divided as one, two, three, four, five and six. Now we first need to know what kind of self-evaluation method would we want to use. Now the most standard way of self-evaluation is to take NBMEs. Um, so I would suggest taking an NBME, not N, but two NBMEs at the end of your first three months of revision and then two NBMEs at the end of your fourth month and then NBME or UL simulation at the end of your fifth month and then finally your exam day. Now between which NBMEs you want to decide to take, that should be your call, uh, but I would suggest taking two NBMEs on one day back to back because that makes you have a real feel for an 8-hour exam. Um, so, um, well, so we'll start with the week one. And like I said in the previous biochemistry video, let that week be all about biochemistry. I have discussed in detail more resources. So let's go to week two, which should be microbiology and immunology. That will be discussed in detail later. But between these two subjects, because they're volatile, need to revise them quite frequently. So you should do them in your first and second week and then right before your first group of NBMEs, give another three days to microbiology and biochemistry each. And then again, between your, before your U-World simulation and NBME, give another two days or three days each to microbiology and biochemistry. And then right before your exam, again, two days each of biochemistry and microbiology. Now, Besides these two highly volatile subjects, I also feel, and there's a reason why it is in the red, is because behavioral sciences was one of my weaker subjects. And behavioral sciences and psychiatry, I would speak of them in the same breath. Whether or not I should be doing that, I don't know, but I do think of them in a similar way. Uh, that was a tough one to wrap my head around, so we will discuss on why it was difficult for me. If it is for you, that might uh, benefit you. Look at it. If it's easy for you, bravo. So uh, between uh, biochemistry and microbiology revisions, we have to space out behavioral science and psychiatry very intelligently. So I have put a week here in your first month of studying for it, and then right before your second group of NBME, and then two days before your uh, final exam. I wouldn't say that it's a volatile subject, but for me, it required multiple revisions and more questions, and hence the amount of time that I have given to it. Now, biostats is another big one. Um, I hadn't done a lot of biostats in my med school, and I don't know if all of you do a lot of biostats, but it was, it was a weak subject for me. And to say that it was a weak subject isn't very honest. I still have a few things that I do not understand completely about biostats, but that's just me being honest. So. That's, that's pretty much it for these four group of subjects. And like I promised, I would do individual uh, videos for all of them. Now let's look at the second group, which says anatomy, physiology, pathology, and pharmacology. 
Now, for, for these four, I like to clump them together and then also include embryology and histology. So, for all of them, we look at them system-wise. And the four big systems, uh, especially based on how many number of questions are there in your U world, I would say CVS, Neuro, Nephro, and GI are the biggest, uh, biggest bunch. And per se, they have a lot to read in terms of pathology, pharmacology as well. So they deserve clearly one week each. Hence, there is a week of CVS, a week of Neuro, a week of Nephro, and a week of GI. Now for Hemong, and Pal, they're kind of small subjects, so I put them together because, well, I love Hemong, and I do like Pal too, so they're, they're kind of, uh, they're not overwhelming subjects, so to put them together in a week is not as difficult, and then your ninth week is going to be reproductive and endocrine, the tenth, rheumat and miscellaneous, and then eleventh is biostats again. So um, this is the kind of schedule that I had. And the only point in sharing this is because a lot of you uh, were wondering that how would you actually have the timeline that I was suggesting in my first video. So this is a pretty rational way of doing it. And if you want to now look at it from perspective of how many questions per day, how would you finish Q banks, then a good way to understand that is that uh, if you are doing your rotations, like your final year rotations and preparing for step one, then I understand that you would have had about five to six hours at the most to study each day. So if you do about minimum of 40 questions or one block per day, or an ideal would be two blocks or 80 questions per day, and that would be you world. But if you do about 20, 30 questions of Kaplan, and then some questions from the resource materials that you have. But basically, if you look at this from this perspective, you will be able to complete your Q bank at least once in the first three, uh, three months. And then this and this, like your fourth and fifth month, you have to understand what your weak subjects are. So for instance, for me, um, CVS and neurology were my weaker subjects. So I decided to, to reread them in this week and divided my time appropriately, did questions appropriately, but whatever you do in your fourth and fifth uh, months, they have to be highly tailored to how you're scoring on your NBMEs. Um, so whatever your target score is, if you're getting that in your NBME first, then your graph should be looking up. And if you haven't achieved your target score in NBME first, then you should achieve it by here. If not, it's okay, it's completely fine. Uh, breathe, relax and uh, keep working towards a longer timeline. But um, I highly recommend that you should uh, achieve your target score and then look at another month of preparation before you take your exam. Um, that's pretty much what I have to say. Uh, in terms of a timeline, I will attach a picture of this at the end of this video. And feel free to customize it, tailor it. This is what worked for me. It may or may not work for you, but I could do my rotations. I could finish U World. I finished it thrice. And I did my mock questions. I could read all my material, look back at my medical school books. And I could also do a, a bit of, um, I did a lot of extracurricular in between as well. So it gave me plenty of breathing space as such. So good luck. And I will uh, follow this up with videos about micro, behavioral, biostats, and this as a group for CVS, Neuro, etc. Bye-bye. Stay tuned. Good luck.